So let's go ahead and create a new program and we're going to call this our PID control. And we're going to go to controllers, micro 820, and we're using the 2080 LC2020 20 QWB. We'll select it and add to project. And then we're going to create a new program by right clicking programs, add, and we're going to use a function block diagram program for this. And the other thing we need to do before we get too far along is we need to configure our Ethernet. So we're going to configure our Ethernet IP address for 192.168.110 with a subnet of 255, 255, 255, 0. Now let's go ahead and open up our program. And let's click over on our toolbox and bring down an instruction block. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to scale our sensor in here. Now, if you remember from the previous video, down here at rest, we were at 160 units. And up here at 12 inches, we were at 3,150 units. So we're going to need to configure that for our 0 to 12. And we're going to use an SCAL or scalar instruction to do that. Now, to use the scalar, if you mouse over, it's going to tell you the data types you need. And the scaler is going to use all real numbers. But our analog input, if we actually go over here and we open up our global variables and we go down to our analog input, you'll see it's a word. So we're going to have to convert it first. And this is one thing that I think the Micro 820 just does an excellent job at is it's any two instructions, what I call it for short. But really, you can convert anything to anything in it without a lot of pain. So we're going to go to our toolbox and let's bring down another instruction block and let's type any and that's going to bring up all of these any two things and we want to go down here and find the any two real. Click OK and then we're going to drag a connector from the O1 to the input of that. And now let's go and grab some variables. So we're going to drag one right there and we're going to go to our micro 820 io tab and scroll down and find that analog input so we're looking for io em ai 0 because we wired our level sensor to input zero now we need to tell it how to scale it now if yours looks like mine it's all truncated and everything and maybe somebody in the comments can tell me how i can default this to not truncating or like auto size, auto size, is that what I'm looking for? But if you click on it, you can grab this and drag it down and make it big enough where you can read it. But we need to give it some parameters here. And we're going to use these variables to do that. So just drag a variable down. We're going to cancel out of that because right now let's just copy and paste this because we need four of them. And I didn't leave us quite enough room here, but here you can drag these around if you want. And you know, let's just drag this one there and then we can drag the next one right up the side of it. And yeah, if you're really OCD, you're going to get upset with my function blocks because yeah, just not always that graceful at dragging them out. Our input minimum and our input max are those raw numbers that we noted, that 160 and 3150. Now we don't actually have to create variables for these we can put them right into here. So if I put 160 and I remember to designate that it's a real number by putting 0.1, then that will work. Now, what will not work is it's the next one. If we put 3150, that's not going to work because it's going to look at 3150 as a double integer. And this is requiring real numbers. So we need to put 3150.0. And now our output min and max, I want zero to be here and I want 12 inches to be up here. So we are going to put in 0, 0.0 and we're going to put in 12.0. And now let's copy and paste this variable one more time for our output over here. And this one we are going to create a variable for. We're going to call this one 
our actual position and it will need to be a real. So that will scale our analog from zero to 12. So next let's go ahead and add our PID instruction. So we're gonna to go to toolbox and we're gonna drag another instruction block down. We're just gonna start typing PID and there's gonna be two that come up. You're gonna get your IPID controller and you're gonna get your basic PID. Now in a later video, we'll actually do the basic PID instruction, but the IPID is what we're gonna be doing in this video. So we're gonna bring it in and again, everything on mine is truncated. So let's drag this out so that we can read everything. The first one is the process. And I'm gonna skip over that one and actually come back to it because it ties in with this output and we need to make sure we understand that one. And the next one is the set point. So that one we do need a variable for because the set point is gonna be where do we want our PID at? In other words, do we want it here at six inches, eight inches? We need to tell the PID what it needs to be. So we're going to bring a variable down. And if you get it in line close enough with that set point, then it'll actually draw the little line for you. It works about half the time for me because, yeah, my fingers just aren't that coordinated. We're going to put in position set point. And that is going to be a real And next we have our feedback. Well, our feedback is our actual position. So we can actually highlight this, copy, paste, and then we can drag it right down here. So our next one is gonna be auto. Now I'll occasionally mouse over this because I can see here auto needs to be a Boolean type tag. So I'm just going to copy and paste this one, bring it down, and we're gonna open this up and we're going to create a PID auto, and that is going to be Boolean. And we'll just copy and paste it again. And this one is going to be PID initialize, and that will also be Boolean. Now our gains are going to be gain PID as a data type. So we're going to copy and paste that. And this time we're going to put in PID gain values. And that is going to be a gain PID. Select it. Then our auto tune is Boolean. So we'll copy and paste again, drag it down. And this will be PID auto tune. And that is Boolean. And then let's paste that one more time for our AT parameters. And that's gonna be a data type of AT param. And that's our parameters for our auto tune. So PID auto tune parameters. So, and that will be an AT param. Occasionally you'll see them like here, it looks like it's blank and it's not blank. And maybe, like I said, maybe somebody can, I'm ha I've had some issues with my function block this place. Maybe somebody can help me out with this. But yeah, what well, the issue is it's too narrow. So if I drag that out, also it'll show. And you can see the bottom of mine are truncated. Now we're to our output side of this. And let's go ahead and hit the easy ones. We have absolute error, we have AT warnings, and we have output gain. And those are going to be a real, a dent, and a gain PID. So let's go ahead and do those. We'll skip this output for now. So we'll just copy and paste one of our parameters again, or you can go right over here to the toolbox and you can drag it down again. And we're gonna call this our PID absolute error, and it's gonna be a real. Then we have our AT warning which is a double integer. So we'll copy and paste this down. And this is going to be our PID AT warning. And it was a double integer. And then let's paste one more time. And these output gains were a gain PID. 
So let's put in PID output gains, and that will be a gain PID. That takes care of everything except our output and process. And I wanted to wait till the end on those because they're a little bit different than our Studio 5000 and our RS Logics 500 PID in that they require you add an external limit to prevent them from winding up. Or, you know, to prevent them, you know, our scale, our output is zero to 4,008. That's 10 volt to keep us from ending up at 4 billion numbers where it takes forever to come back down. That's what we're going to be doing here. I just wanted to make sure we understood why. So first, we're going to need our limit instruction. So let's just click an instruction block and bring it down. And actually, let's, let's get it over here out of the way because we're going to add a little bit more before then. But let's go ahead and type limit. And if we mouse over it, it's going to require all double integers. Now, if we go over here to our PID, its output and the process that we're talking about are going to be reals. So we're going to need to do some conversions first. So let's go ahead and go to our toolbox. We'll bring another instruction block down, and we're going to use that really handy any instruction. And we're going to be doing an any to dent, which is right there. And we're going to click our output, bring it up to there. And then this is going to go to there. Now, again, for some reason, my stuff's getting truncated. If we drag that out a little bit, yeah, it's going to tell us there's any to dent. Same thing up here. This one right here, really, I should drag out enough to see. There we go. It doesn't take much but there. So then we have a min and a max. Well, our min and our max is actually going to be the min and max of our analog, which is 0 and 4,008. So we're going to grab a variable, bring it down. And in this case, we're just going to put zero. Now do not put 0.0 because .0, that will not work. And maybe we'll play with that in another video to talk about the errors that you can see and how to resolve them. And now let's copy and paste that parameter. And let's bring it, oh, I didn't make myself enough room. So let's drag that out. And... Bring that there, and this one is going to be 4,008. So what this is going to do is, if this parameter coming out of this output is 2,000, it's going to output 2,000. But if it's 6,000, it's only going to output 4,008. If it's a negative 6,000, it's going to output zero. So now we need to put this into the real format that this process over here is looking for. Because remember, we're in dents here, and we need reels over here. So now we're going to use another one of these any instructions. So we'll bring our instruction block down, and we're going to go for an any, but this time we're going to go for a reel. And we'll drag that to right there. And now, you know, somebody really wanted to be you know, shortcutting, you could actually drag this here, but one, that just looks horrible. So we're going to make a variable for that. Plus, in some later videos, we're going to actually manipulate our output additionally. So let's go ahead and put a parameter variable down. And let's call this one our PID speed command. Oops, except for I forgot I, I left that as Boolean. And no, that needs to be a real. So we'll go back and change that to a real. We'll drag that out where we can see what it says there. And then we'll put that right there. So now we can copy and paste this variable right over to here. And that's going to feed it back into our process. And that takes care of the structure of our PID. We've still got some parameters to address, but this is a good start. Now let's add our output, because we still, this right now is just going to an internal variable. First, let's just copy and paste this variable again. That's our PID speed output, which is in a real format. And let's just actually 
I can't remember where I can do this or not. So let's try it. So we can talk about these innies again. Is let's go to the toolbox and let's bring an instruction down. And we're going to use a move instruction. We're going to go over to our I.O. tab now. And we're going to go to this analog output right here. In fact, let's go and label that. This is going to be our fan speed. And we'll click it. And let's go ahead and build this just to make sure there's no errors. Oh, and okay, it did not like that. I was wondering if it would. So what it's saying right there is these do have to match. And that's so I was just curious. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete this little bit here out. And we'll drag that over. And we're going to put in another one of those any commands right there. And this will be any to word because we'll need a word to make this work. And now we can just connect that right in the middle of it. And we'll hit our build button again and everything is great now. So that's just a really cool feature is that any function. Okay, let's go ahead and download our program. And if you need any help downloading your program, either through the Ethernet IP driver or the Ethernet devices driver or serially, then look in the description. We've got videos on all of that. When you're done downloading, make sure that you put your controller back in run mode. Let's go ahead and look at some of our variables. Actually, even before we do that, let's, let's look right here at our output. We can see our output is six, 0.4214 to the negative fifth power right now. But when we go through our limit, we're putting up an output of zero. And that's what that is for, to keep those windups from happening. And then in a later video, we're gonna talk more about integral windup. In this case, this particular one, just you have to do it. So that's why we kind of had to address it now. So if you have any questions about that, just hang tight. Let's go to our local variables and let's have a look at our gains to start with because we're going to need to put some values in here in fact okay it puts in a very very small value by default and i, I can't imagine this i don't know maybe in an hour with these values it might would get somewhere i don't really know but really let's just start just really we're going to start by throwing something in there and seeing how it does we're going to put 10 for a proportional and for our integral, we're going to put 0.1. And really, that's just a guess. I mean, you got to have something to get the thing started moving. And, you know, over time, you probably will find some values that work pretty good for your applications. And next, we have this auto and this initialize. And we're going to need to check both of those to get this thing going. Now, we're not actually going at one because I need to turn the trainer on. We're sitting still right now. So right now we need to put this position set point in right here. And actually I'm going to go back to our function block diagram to do this, just so you can see everything that happens when you do it. Right now we are putting a little bit of an output out and not really sure why. Oh, because we got a slightly negative position. So it's trying to put, it actually is trying to push that ball up a little bit, but it's a very minute amount. But now we're going to put our set point here. We're going to change it to six for six inches and immediately the ball comes to life it raises up and actually I'm pretty impressed